Namaste everyone. Very warm welcome to Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Mujiji Ki Jai. Good, good, good. <laughs> If you're in the hangout, the way to ask questions is to unmute your mic and when you sense that there is some space to speak, you can come and share. <laughs> and on YouTube, you can post your questions in the chat and we will look at them. can see some of you expected expectantly waiting for <laughs> something to start <laughs> but what if there was nothing to say <laughs> it's become sort of uh, an expectation that we should start with a monologue <laughs> What if one day I just ran out? So if there was nothing, nothing to say now, would you still feel that there is something left undone? If this voice that speaks from here stopped, <laughs> right now was the last words it was going to say, would it feel like something is left undone? Or would it just be that? There's so much joy in the sharing and that's why we are here. You see, so is there a sense of incompletion about something? You see, like some of you go back, Florentina is here today and tomorrow she goes back. So, does this seem like something still needs to be done, completed or it's... <laughs> It's full and then everything which is coming in life is just coming and going. Feels like even if things come, God is also comes. Yeah. Like there's no, no sense of like to get everything done now. It's just mm -hmm. like a, just the truth. Is there anything that you still want? So the one who has no desire, how can this one be bound? And desire, when I speak of desire, I'm not speaking of normal momentary desires. 
in your humble you feel great i'm not speaking like that i'm speaking more in terms of is there something which you still feel like freedom or something which i still need to get some completion <laughs> total total letting go <laughs> we have these concepts right that i'm there but i have just to let go totally totally it feels like um if it needed to drop something more at some point it will just happen so i get it yes but is there something which is keeping tabs on this dropping or not dropping because this one who tracks the temperature of our freedom also must be thrown away yes it's well here yes yeah it says uh, more deepening is required yeah. more clarity is required it just began it just started yeah. <laughs> so in this also although it can sound like very humble nice things to say we still picked up the me is it that i have just started this means <laughs> because for this voice it will always be <clears throat> almost there just little more so few more sets and one more retreat something this one is never satisfied this one will always say how can this awareness get any more complete does it have states of completion even unassociated being can we say it is at a certain level of consciousness no it just be so when we speak of levels of consciousness or deepening and things it's more about what are the associations that it's still pretending to have so it's all about the pretense actually not in reality what are the pretenses it's still continuing to hold on to and it happens that you keep coming to satsang and you find more and more of these concepts are dissolving so in that way we can call it a deepening see but in reality for consciousness nothing has changed only the pretenses are being dropped it's like we've been saying isn't it that you've been pretending to be a cat <laughs> you see and just by dropping the pretense does it change something no it's just an idea that we have other it's like um okay and then not the fact that i'm going back to sahaj yeah. it's like okay if there's something that needs to happen on the grocery street there's no problem but even if it was like that perhaps before there would be this sense like okay i have to make sure i find all of the identities that need to be dropped right now and make sure that when i'm with father i get all of that done and It doesn't feel like that. Anyway. There's identities that need to be dropped at some point, and let them show themselves, and then be dropped. But it's, it doesn't feel so much like my business, you know. Yes, exactly. Just, just almost, and it's a joy even to look. You know? So this is very good. So now, is there anything in the appearance which seems to still hold some power over you? and we can all a question like this contemplate like this what in the appearance still seems to hold some power over us so sometimes it can be about freedom also so suppose ananta says no you haven't got anything at all anything all that you're saying is just words does it have some power <laughs> now she's scared <laughs> what should i say no <laughs> no but truly we can look like this i would welcome that father Even if that's said, then good. Maybe I need that. 
Could be. Could be half the half power. I don't know. But in a moment, so I suppose I would okay. tell you now, you know nothing. Those are the most free words. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't believe a single word you say. <laughs> I want to just provoke you in this way today Please. because you are here. <laughs> I'm watching you in this. Yes. It's almost more free to hear that actually yes. than to you to tell me, oh, your reports are so nice. <laughs> like, so what? No, tell me you're nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like, yeah. I would rather know nothing. Father, it feels like in, um, in coming here to Bangalore. <clears throat> I don't know, something dropped somehow. Not needing to make sure I'm doing the right thing. You know? Yes. And, and, and instead it's just in the, in the flow. Maybe thoughts come about it, but it's okay. And it's so free, Father, because it really feels like Let this be tested, you know, let this be tested. But it feels like it started to really feel like it. Whereas before it was like, I have to be in touch, I have to be there to see. But it's, in, in, in meeting your father and in being in Satsang with you, it also has freed up that thing of just Guruji's form as the master, you know? It's, it's everywhere, you know, it's like, I mean, there were so many all beings really, you know? So this fear of not being in the right place and then stuff is Yeah, instead to be with him is just a joy and a privilege yes. and an honor, you know? It's not like I need to be there. <laughs> because you're finding him inside, isn't it? This doesn't mean that because many times the mind can pick this up and say, He's here, no? Then why do I need to go somewhere? Even that can come, so we have to keep smelling for, for this. I, like you said very beautifully, that there can be no greater privilege actually to be in his presence, in his physical presence. Yeah, it's, the it's the best place, but it's like, if life moves me another way, yeah. maybe I wouldn't necessarily choose it, but I'll go. <laughs> I flow. Yeah. And this one who Goes or doesn't go? <laughs> the one who is making these conclusions, is that a tangible one? Because another subtle form of taking our temperature becomes like this. That you know, now I was here, then now I'm here, and now I've come to this place which is so much more beautiful, and then really like this. It's very, it's very, it's getting very subtle, isn't it? This guy which is still saying, yes, now we were there, now we're here. 
you can share I just no, because okay. because uh, I have to know today since <laughs> I don't know when we meet in person next so yeah. <laughs> It feels like I feel like this thing can play in two ways somehow. Yeah. I don't know. Like at some point, it's just like a natural joy that just comes out, yeah. and it's just in awe actually of what is taking place. You know, it's just like, and sometimes it's a bit like. It's like good. You'll see that you find it extremely bothersome to make any conclusions about yourself, even about where you are. I was that, now I'm this, now I'm this. And then this happens, this is okay or not okay, none mm -hmm. of that actually, even then we play. Mm This way we are becoming empty of all concepts about me, I, my life, my story. And even to say, I used to need this and I don't need this now. Because <laughs> we are emptying it out now, super speed. We are now emptying out all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to leave here as a free person. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the biggest disservice I've done to you and to the world. <laughs> the world also does not need another the burden of another free person. <laughs> It feels rather like it's just um, you're just getting more and more quiet, more and more light. Hmm? No, this is an evaluation, and no. It's okay. <laughs> I don't want to be correct either. <coughs> Just every moment, this fresh. Don't know anything about anything. <laughs> just, you know, the mind can come and make very beautiful stories, especially because the adventures you've been having, you know, from country to country, and then it's moving. It's beautiful. See, life is going so beautifully in my life. Then quickly it becomes my life, yeah. and then it becomes my life again. Then, so we're speaking very subtle concepts now. Very subtle. And in this way, it can then subtly hold on to something. The minute I let go, then my life became so beautiful. It sounds so good, and we good can say that. The minute I let go, my life began. So this my can again come up with this. If it's just conversationally, it's okay. If it's just conversationally, we're sharing, we're just chatting. But if there's still belief about this my life, then we can look at this and throw it away. Because it is nobody's life. It is God's life. See, God's life is always beautiful.
any story, no matter how beautiful it is, takes away from the freshness of now. It's now, it's just now. <laughs> Can't find the meaning, but it's perfect. <laughs> Not even perfect. Just it is what it is. <laughs> okay, we have some requests on the YouTube and so Annette says, Can you please talk about boredom today? I love you so much. Yes, my dear, we did speak yesterday and said, remind me to talk about it. So thank you for the reminder. And then Priya says she wants to come up. Priya can come first. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to contemplate something with you. <laughs> Can you start again, my dear? My my output was at zero, so. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to contemplate something with you. Um, because I can see that it can only be contemplated now. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, very well. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it's, it's really obvious to say this, but it's 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 just it's just what what is, and um, it can only be ever this. Yeah. It's all it can ever be. Yeah. And even when the um, even when it seems like it's not this. That's all that can ever be. Yes. It can't be any other way. It has never been. And I know I've said this before, <laughs> but it's always. <laughs> it can't be any other way. And when there's like. Um, when there seems like there's something else, like there's been very strong appearances in the last few days, not with me, but with a close family member. and. And it's just, it can't be any, it's just, oh, it's really hard to even have the words for it. <laughs> I don't know how you speak about it all the time. <laughs> even, yeah, like even when it appears not to be this, it's still this. Yeah, yeah. very much so, very much so. And that is why it needs nothing. Because no matter what appears and disappears, this, you, I, remains exactly what it always has been. Yeah, and I can't even say that it's in awareness. Yeah. Because I don't even know about, about that. Yeah. I can't seem to pinpoint that. It's just this. And, uh, there is no perfect. And it's just always. There is no perfect word for this. No. <laughs> no. And it's just. Uh, it just ends every, all concepts. 
and yet they can still exist within this. <laughs> and um, at the at the moment, there just seems to be a, 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 a con just there's just wanting to contemplate this all the time, <laughs> and it's the most, and that's just this as well. <laughs> yes. And, and I and I think that they can never any, nothing else can it can't be anything else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you very well how yeah. it's very well because once it becomes clear, there's this. Only this. Whatever you might say or not say, only this. Whatever might appear or not appear, only this. You can see things, but only this. Yeah, and it can be it, it can be so many things. It can sometimes feel spiritual. Sometimes it can be nothing, or or sometimes confusing, or <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Yes. What 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 it is. Yes. And it's it's impossible to talk about because because this is all it is. And it's it seems so simple and so obvious and yet so elusive. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And it's been really helping me to contemplate it because when the when the the concept of no it can't just be this <laughs> arises. <laughs> it, I can see that. Well, that's just this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and it feels like it. Could it, be, sorry. it is not unnatural for this feeling that it can't be just this to arise. It's not because. We felt like we started climbing on a mountain 10 years ago, 15 years ago, some of you will say 30 years ago. We started climbing this mountain, you see, and we wanted to get to the peak of this mountain, to the top. And some of you say, oh, 20 years I've been climbing, 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 I'm still not there, and you're calling me from there, but I'm still not reaching. Yeah, so what's happening? What's <laughs> and then, when it seems like, you come to the discovery that I never really moved. I was already the foot of the mountain and the base of the mountain are same. Yeah, you know? yeah. <clears throat> then it can come like this that, oh, but how can it just be like this? I've been at it for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes these kind of things can also come. But this is also part of the appearance of this Please, isn't it? Yeah, it all just appears as this. <laughs> you know, the feeling that it's not this appears, and it's totally fine. Yes, yes. It just feels not fine, <laughs> but it's that, that's just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and the feeling of not fine is also that, isn't it? So I say again. The feeling of not fine is also that. It's also that it's everything is just this <laughs> all the time. Not even all the time. It's just yes, yeah, this. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's just so great to contemplate it as well. And yet that's just this too. It's just. I could just better turn off. I just sound like a record that's just got stuck. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but I know this sense of wonder which can come. It's always just been this. <laughs> all the parts. That's why we say, you know, much ado about nothing because it's always only. <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yet in the play, when the 
arising of these who come and they say, okay, can you tell me what this is about? Usually they are fresh like this in, in this play and to say it's about nothing. Then something is not ready to assimilate. That's why we take different approaches. <laughs> different approaches arise just to bring this pointing to the nothingness itself. Yeah, and every approach is is so perfect and when I listen to different teachers, it's all the same. They're all trying to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> because you now no longer see the dichotomy. <laughs> because very often what happens to the personal mind is it sees a dichotomy in everything. It's always this versus that. This versus that. It must be Dweta or Adweta. <laughs> it must be this master or this master. This must be the truth or that must be the truth. But now you don't realize, you don't see the dichotomy. Everything is just this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it just doesn't matter what this is. Because it can't be any other way. And even if the person reacts to it because, you know, it's just like it's something like someone kicks a dog and, you know, there's a reaction here. Th that's, that's just, that's just what it is. Yes. There's no need to get rid of anything or, or change anything. And uh, it's quite ordinary and yet sometimes not. Um, but it's just so, it's just, it's just so recognizable because it can't be any other way. It's always been this. It will always be this. Well, in fact, always, always yeah. within this. Sorry? Even the concept of eternity arises within this. Time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Please yeah. come and see. Yeah. So, so time cannot touch this. Space cannot touch. No. Yeah, it's just always just. I don't know what this is. <laughs> there is no I. There's just this. There's just this. It's just the saying I. <laughs> yeah. It's like this. Yeah. You can use the word I. You can still use the word, yeah. but it no longer smells of the I. Yeah, yeah, because it's so boring saying the apparent eye. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, my love. I'll, st I'll stop speaking now because I, I really do feel like I'm a stuck record. <laughs> no, it's very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. I love you so much. Love you too, my love. Jerome said, Father, do you mean that the move of the attention has to be seen also? As it doesn't mean doesn't mean anything, what is always there. It is what it is, more dancing <laughs> with whatever is perfect always. So Can you say that something exists without you being aware of it? We cannot say that something exists without us being aware of it. Even the imagination of something existing 
is our awareness of this imagination for us to be able to report on. So this movement of attention, without awareness, can it even exist, this movement? <laughs> there is, without awareness of attention, there can be no attention on. So movement comes later, you see? So it is this awareness, which is the light of this entire play, including consciousness, cannot exist without awareness. First, there is this seeing. For the seeing, there is a being. If there were just a being and no seeing, then what would it mean? <laughs> Who would be aware that there is a being? So from awareness itself, with the creation of this dynamic aspect, the phenomenal aspect called being. And as the truth of this being, come all these forces then. Attention, belief, other phenomenal forces. But all of it rests on you. Without you, there is nothing. All of this is about you. Even God is about you. Not even that you are God. God is here for you. you see? But just not you personally. So sometimes what can happen is that we can feel that nothing to do is like a personal guidance or something. We take it also personally. And we say that, okay, I as a person must now not do anything. <coughs> or I must do something. But in satsang, it's not personal guidance. Everything is just consciousness having a monologue. <laughs> there is nothing for us to pick up and say, that I must do this or I must not do this. So even when you say that you must become completely empty, it's not something that you can do personally. That emptiness is coming because it is seen that it is this consciousness itself which associated with so many concepts and now it is tiring of playing this game of concepts. So it is consciousness which is clearing itself, emptying itself of all these concepts which seem to have been picked up along the way. Okay. And because they have been picked up in the past and they have been nourished, when this when they when we are throwing them away, then they can be accompanied by these feelings of fear, these feelings of what is going to happen, these kind of things can come. Okay. But we must become empty of all of this also. But who is there to do any of this? There is nobody. <laughs> you see, so therefore I say in satsang, although we keep saying that we will do this, you will become this, this is what you must do. It is truly not speaking to any of you individually see, or personally. And there is great rest in this. There is great rest in this. Because if you were to speak metaphorically, we can say that it is consciousness itself which is tired of carrying the burden of the person. Just speaking metaphorically. It is consciousness itself which is tired of carrying the burden of the person. So who must be rid of the person? Can the person rid itself of itself? Just with this simple seeing that all of this is just a belief. Belief in an idea. All of this has just been a belief in an idea of me as a separate entity. 
And that's why we start looking for evidence of this me. Because when you start looking for the evidence of this me, you find that there is no me here. Then how long can we believe this idea? Then every time we look for the evidence of the me, it is not found. It is impossible to truly believe it. So that's all that this is about. So therefore the vigilance which is there in satsang is only for this smelling of a me. Is there still a me smelly somewhere? You see? <laughs> the consciousness is still saying out, out, out. <laughs> this smell, looking for these smelly concepts which might still be there. Although they might be very well dressed sometimes. You might be very well dressed sometimes. And say yes, yes this is so beautiful. No, even you out. <laughs> even, you. <laughs> even this one out. out, out. Because heaven for me is not beautiful. We paint a picture of heaven which is full of beautiful things, but I've seen in my own experiences that anything phenomenal, no matter how beautiful, it means nothing after a while. Sweetest music, the best food, the most beautiful scenery, you see, the most holy place also. After a while, it just seems. If you go, when you go to Tiru, okay. <laughs> 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 I start saying so I should complete it. <laughs> when you go to Tiru sometimes, and you see over there that you're in front of Anunachala and you're like melting, you know, you're just dissolving in front of. Uh, and then the people who live there, they're just so casual about it. They're just walking around doing their business, wondering what these guys are doing, you know, what is it? They can feel like this. Because ultimately, even this is phenomenal. Even the most holy experience is phenomenal. So ultimately, not even about this. So heaven for me is just empty. I know it sounds strange to say. Because we cannot tire of our no-thingness, we cannot tire of our emptiness. Beauty we tire of very fast because very quickly we contaminate it with our need, you see. Oh, I got something beautiful and must hold on to this. Very quickly it is contaminated. Not even beauty. Not even peace, not even joy. Although these are the byproducts which come on on their own. So Indian in Indian mythology, what happens is, whenever something auspicious is happening, then they show these like in <laughs> TV series that we grew up with when we were growing up. They would have these devas that would appear in the sky and they would be throwing flowers, you see, and something auspicious is happening. So then love, peace, joy, these are like these devas, the deva energy, who are coming to celebrate the auspiciousness of you. But imagine if someone is trying to chase these, where would they go looking? <laughs> you are not about any of this, just about this nothingness, emptiness. Which you can do nothing about. <laughs> and yet, it just moves like this on its own. And anytime we invent a me, it will only have some stupid commentary about this. It will say, yes, yes, I got it. Or it will say, no, no, I didn't get it. Either of these is not it. <laughs> Yeah. You are it. Namaste, Pa. Oh. <laughs> you are it. That is why the root question always is, Who am I? Who am I? Yeah. 
Atma, you wanted to say something, my dear? You can say. Yes, yes, Father. Yes, Namaste. <laughs> Just uh, when I thought I may come to to expose. Just my heart start uh, beating faster. I don't know why. Like I would, like I will say, I don't know what, but it's nothing. And I was just observing, and maybe it's 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 a kind of fear just uh, coming up, and uh, just was just observing. You asked, you said, if there is still something that I think that has to happen or yeah. has not happened, and. I don't see that. Uh, what is happening is already that, and it's even too much happening. I mean, always changing. But what I see sometimes, not always, but for example, this morning, you know that that thing of thoughts coming so much in the morning, and there is no anybody here who believes them. But just they still come, and 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 there are thoughts about. Like a fear, if I lose this, if if if, but only in the morning, when the day starts, as you know, like now, I, I ask myself, but why those thoughts are coming? Because I'm not bothered with them, but they still come. They still come, like like something wants to to really, I don't know, to to make me to to, to make me scared, my my own mind, but it's. It's really strange. It's it's like what will happen in the future, you know? Like it's not because I'm afraid as I see of future, but because there is no plan here. No plan at all, nothing, nothing. Just empty mind and in the morning those thoughts come like no, you can't live like that because what will happen? When we we'll, you will have uh, ten years more, what will happen with you? You know, and then, then, then I see it's okay because what is ten years after nothing? Because it's always this, and then it's like something here starts speaking with that voice, that voice saying what will happen, and then something here like explaining, oh, but don't worry, you know, everything will be okay, <laughs> and then, and then when when. When I got get up, I say, "My Lord, again that crazy mind, you know." But it's it's like somewhere here is is a fear of of is it possible to lose this this it's this state? Is it possible to lose it? And every time I see, it's not possible. And even it's going deeper and more beautiful and better. And it seems sometimes like yesterday whole day was so beautiful. When my sister came home after work, she said, what did you do? Are you bored here? I said, I did nothing but, you know, many things. How can I explain her what happened? I can't explain. And then we go to walk in the nature and I was so excited and and it seems like it's there is too much beauty everywhere, inside me, outside, in people. I see her her daughter differently like I see for the first time and her daughter asked me what is happening to you and then I say to myself stop stop still slow down slow down you know it's too much and because it's too beautiful my mind comes in the morning to say you will lose it I don't know it, <laughs> just that <laughs> Yeah, so if there is any belief that this is a state that you have found, then this fear can survive. That this is a new state that we have found. You see, but you know already that this is not a state. All states are coming and going in this. <laughs> you see, even those who don't know anything about this already are this. <laughs> you see. So there is no no way for you to lose this. Yes, it's that what I saw also yesterday. Like I I'm again 
in, in love with life. I'm so excited every moment, even if I'm totally calm outside. Inside, total silence, but in excitement, I can't explain. And it's, it's really like I'm recognizing that I cannot lose this because it's what I am. And it seems to like sometimes it's not too much, but there is no end to this beauty. There is no end to that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is why sometimes I try to use the word wonder. You see that although it has been deprived of all personal meaning, Whatever is appearing has been deprived of all personal meaning, yet every moment is full of so much wonder. <laughs> so wonderful, but not even wonder. So I know how you struggle with the word, I can understand it. <laughs> and, and also a little bit of, just a little bit of fear, because I don't want to, to, how to say, to make, to hurt anybody with my state, with, with not state, but with this was coming, and there is no problem in that. I, I don't express it outside. It's it, that's okay. I'm not anymore like before a child that wants, you know. I, actually, I feel as a child who wants to express inside, like whoa. But I outside, I feel it's okay. It's not. But still, sometimes here with my sister, I feel maybe I'm too much. Maybe, but it's not. It's okay. It's okay, but just still like settling down between what I feel inside and outside, just to, to have this balance that I would like, I think, to have. Maybe that is what is still like I think I need this balance always. Maybe it's not needed, I don't know. <laughs> this one also you forget about because what is happening is that in your trying to not hurt. You might be hurting people, you see. <laughs> and what we have tried to avoid, that persists, you see. And it sort of manifests when we're trying to resist something inside, then sometimes it shows up in front of our eyes, which is also inside. <laughs> yes, and, and sometimes it comes this this voice, which is not mine, which is not mine. It's a voice from, from before when I was a child and a young girl. I was really very, very often in a good mood very happy for nothing and very often my mother my mother but some others also would say uh, like like slow down slow down slow down with your happiness slow down <laughs> and, and yesterday so and this morning like me with my sister like you know like this and this voice like saying oh no 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 you know like uh, retreat back a little bit and also the voice saying, you are crazy, you are crazy, you cannot uh, be like this, you know, but just coming and going, I think it's, it's, it's just a habit or a mechanism from before. And from this, this fear is coming, I think. But it will, it will leave me, it will leave me, I know. <laughs> yeah. Then when we forget about balance, then we forget about both sides also. And we forget about both sides and the balance, then whatever is natural in that moment, whatever is natural in that moment is allowed to arise. You see? With no concern about what other th others' thoughts are coming up about any of this. Yeah? So we're still talking about the neutrality. Because sometimes when we hear, hear something like this, something wants to become reckless, you see? It wants to then become reckless and say, no, but not like that. Every moment is fresh. Fresh. Yes, it's it's actually all happening inside me. Doesn't matter about outside. It's all this uh, is happening. All this speaking and this everything inside me. Everything, everything. It just like it's. But I, I just let it come and let it go, and uh, and it's okay. Just sometimes I feel, okay, now I, I, I said it all, I will not have anything more to expose. And then 
when I come on Hangout, the moment you come and begin to speak, I already feel, and something inside me says, are you just pretending that everything this is happening to you? <laughs> that you have to say something, maybe you are forcing it, <laughs> you know, but everything is just, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. I'm very familiar with this voice, which constantly will say, "You just speak, you just speaking, right? you just listen, you just listen." Even now, I shared with some of you earlier, isn't it, that before satsang starts, inevitably this voice will come and say, "You just, what are you doing? <laughs> what is this about? Something it will say," right. <laughs> and then you get used to it. It's just like a mosquito that you know it lives here. <laughs> and every day as, as no power is given to it, the the buzzing of the mosquito gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. We never want to give you this impression that finger snap over, mind gone. Yes, 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 it's, it's all that, it's, but it's all okay, yeah. all okay, because for many years I haven't uh, heard these voices, you are fake, you are this, you are that, you know, these voices seems like to be new, but it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> many things I never thought about, many, many thoughts about myself, these or these, I never had, now are coming. That's strange. Now, every sort of thoughts from from every side. I said, but what is this? From where they are coming? <laughs> That's why Guruji says, no, he has the best examples for all of these symptoms. He says the mind calls all its cousins. <laughs> you also come. You also come. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you. Jerome had said, what is the right balance in response to what Atma was saying? Now seem to be enough balance as nothing left as of now. That's the way I'm reading it. I'm not sure whether I read that correctly. Yes, even the balance, the concept of balance is not required. Okay, there are some questions in the chat. Oh yes, we were to speak of boredom also. So we were saying yesterday that many times it is this sense of boredom, which is like a combination of little bit of lethargy, little bit of dissatisfaction with something. But basically boredom also is a resistance to what is, isn't it? So although it seems very harmless, oh, I'm just bored. Even kids will say, oh, I'm just, just bored. <laughs> but I've seen very much like this that what starts off as Buddha, you see, like we had these um, people who were coming and trying to disrupt 
the, the satsang and things like this. I'm sure for most of them it would have started off as a boredom. I, I don't know what to do. It's so just meaningless. It must seem like that. The present moment is so meaningless. I have to add some spice to it or something. I need something. So then what starts off as very seemingly harmless, just boredom, can then become very fertile ground for very strong egoic tendencies. can become very fertile ground because we are open now to input from this mind. I'm so bored, what do I do when the mind is saying go, go set that shop on fire or something. <laughs> You wonder about how it starts, no? How these people who are arsonists and graffiti, it starts like this, very much with this sense that it's boredom, it's something is meaningless, and something is trying to find. Even in this, like I said the other day, everybody is a hero of their movie in their mind. Nobody is the villain in their mind. <laughs> so like this, they think that this boredom is there, and I'm going to bring some meaning to my life. And very often this becomes a egoic adventure, a misguided adventure. So qualitatively, energetically, it's a little bit different from the dispassion that we speak of. The dispassion that we speak of is the sense that the world seems to be losing its meaning for me. That's the dispassion of Ram, isn't it? In the yoga position. So, the world seems to be losing its meaning for me, can seem like similar to this, but it's, it's qualitatively different. So when the world starts to seem meaningless, I don't have this feeling even to go and destroy something in the world, or change something out there. You see? Then attention gets more and more inward facing. So if the world is meaningless, oh my, am I also part of this world? What is my purpose? What am I doing here? So that is the auspicious dispassion. That is the auspicious dispassion. But this boredom can lead to a lot of trouble sometimes and it is basically a resistance to what is. If there is wonder in every moment, if there is joy appearing, then we will not go around saying, I'm so bored. And then when you see that this does not happen, then you can spend many hours just with yourself in silence. Nothing is needed. Doesn't mean you're avoiding something. Okay. But if nothing is available, if you're sitting in a dark room, you see, you're <laughs> in the world. The world's idea of worst punishment is what? <laughs> <laughs> Solitary <laughs> confinement. <laughs> That's the world's idea of the worst punishment. I'm going to put you in solitary confi confinement. It's going to be dark. Just. And then you feel that they, they'll go crazy in this. But you tell a sadhu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to put you in solitary confinement. Oh, thank you, thank you. I've been looking for a cave. <laughs> These caves are so dirty and there are snakes and monkeys. Are you going to give me a cave? <laughs> and every day you will give me food also. Wow. <laughs> yes. So it's just a question of perspective. Isn't it? So if the mind stops bothering us, if you're comfortable like this, then solitary confinement, what does it mean? It sounds so beautiful to me. Yeah. Sounds so beautiful to me. Ten years solitary. Just sit in one dark room. Sounds very beautiful. Because <laughs> you don't have this energetic boredom. What do I do? What do I do? So like this. When it feels like, oh, satsang has become so boring, then we must look in this, into this tendency also together. And I see like this, many times I'll be sitting with Guruji and satsang will be on, three hours are gone, and something will be coming here, okay, now, now we should stop, now it's enough to stop. Mm -hmm. Like this, you can see. But it's very good contemplation also like this.
We use that even in the sense of boredom is coming. Use this also sense to add add fuel to your inquiry. Don't just let go of it as a humble. So just boredom. Boredom can be very very fertile space for ego. And Jesh had said nothing to say is beautiful. Father, when you say nothing to say, it is complete. So we're still reading the chat from the beginning of Satsang. Jesh says, so too, Father, pick up the I slash mind without even noticing. It's very subtle like this. Sina says, thank you for this subtle pointing. The truth in my, in my seeing and feeling is confirmed. <coughs> it is so helpful. Google says, thank you, Priya. I'm feeling exactly feeling the same. Thank you so much for sharing. It is just this. So Tita said, Beloved Anantaji, you're, then in quotes, if I am very rude to you right now, I was telling you, was it? <laughs> was it rude of me to say that? <laughs> if I am very rude to you right now, what will happen? If I say you know nothing, what? And she says, this is as helpful as if you are actually Doing it and joyfully the lesson is learned. Mm -hmm. Yes, there can be attachment to this Guru's approval. We have big attachment. I have seen like this here also. Everything else in the world is okay, but if Guruji tells me something, <laughs> it's okay like right that. I like very much what she says because many times when she starts speaking, she says, like this. Be tested at this point. So Chitra says, deepest love and gratitude to you too, my dear. Huh, do you hear me now? Jerome says, don't hear you anymore. If you can hear me in the Hangout, show me a thumbs up or something. Yeah. Yesterday, some, someone who was here in the satsang today, she wrote to me and said, you know, I, I realize that I'm using you as a crutch. <laughs> and now I'm going to throw away even this, not, you didn't use the same words, I'm just paraphrasing. <laughs> but I'm going to throw away even this crutch now. And I want to know that I can do it myself. I want to be independent even of this crutch. So, what I feel to say is that before you lose this crutch, lose that eye. Mm -hmm. Because this can be very subtle again. This can be very subtle again. Sometimes one of the trump cards of the mind itself can be like this. That, oh, you've been in satsang. You understood, you are intelligent, you are bright. So now why do you need? You discovered, no, you are that, you are that. Why do you need this crutch? Oh, now this one is still around, you see. <laughs> so I told her that you please stay in such. <laughs> and I'm very happy that she came.
And Stina says a thought is coming sometimes, and it says that awakening is possible only when I am able to accept and be untouched by a disfigurement of my body and face. Like this, there is no end to this one, you see. There is no end to this one because this one will say, Oh, Jesus walked on water, he touched water and it became wine. So then we can say, Let's wait for that to happen. So don't go with this voice. It is the trickster, it will always say, Next. You see? If somebody comes and says, Nothing will ever happen to your body, they invent a new technology, and says, Nothing will ever happen to your body, so forget about all of these fears, then the mind will say, you must then be able to accept something else, something else. It's never enough for the mind. Stina says, thank you Ananta, this love for emptiness is here. Mind sometimes says this is a boring life. <laughs> Samira is here. Samira says, can it have two different aspects? A being aspect and a clear seeing aspect. A feeling in body presence and a seeing all. So let's look, I haven't seen you in satsang before, so let's rewind to the basics that we speak about here. When we say that there is nothing, what we actually mean is that there is no phenomenon. And when do you know that there is no phenomena? In the sleep state. Yet, you know that there is something called sleep state. You say, I went to sleep, I had very good sleep, I want to sleep. So you are aware of the existence of something called sleep state, even though there is nothing phenomenal from there to report. Before there is an awareness that there is sleep and there is waking. That's why you are able to say that I woke up. That means there was another state in front and there was a sense that something woke up. So you can differentiate between sleep state and waking state. You see? So in sleep state, there is no thing. So what happens when waking state comes? This awareness is untouched, unmoved, and is now aware of something called the waking state. So what is this waking state? You will find that what wakes up is this sense of I am, the sense of being. Which is not present in deep sleep, it is present now in waking state. So being is here. So I ask you, can you stop being now? Can you stop being now? And you see, no, this presence, this being is here, it cannot be stopped. So this being is just being. Then very simply I can ask you, who sees this? You see it, isn't it? Even being, you see. You see? The same one that is aware of sleep state, is aware of waking state, is aware of dream state, is the same one which is aware of the content of these states. So the presence or absence of being, the presence of the external world, all of it is seen by you. This seeing is unchanging, unmoving. This being is appearing and dissolving. So this seeing is what we call awareness and this being is what we call consciousness. So one of the mistakes that we make sometimes when we hear this is we confuse the seeing that I am speaking of to be the seeing through the senses or the phenomenal seeing, which is seen through the eyes or the senses. This is not the awareness that we are talking of. The awareness we are talking of is aware even of this phenomenal witnessing, that which is aware of 
what is seen through the eyes also that is the seeing which i am talking about so seeing and being awareness and consciousness and it is not that the being is in the body although it can be experienced like that we can also say heart you see but this being is present irrespective of which body there is so in what we call a dream state there can be a different body the being was there first the being is the same the sense i am so we can contemplate whether being is in the body or body is in the being it's a good contemplation to Welcome to Satsang. So Ham says, "I know that voice. It is getting smaller." Cornelia said, "That voice is barking here too." Yes. yes, yesterday or day before we were saying, the Guruji refers to this song, and Jesh said it's Jalil. <laughs> the jolly where uh, the birds are flying in the sky and the dog is barking this voice let it be like this dog barking and yet your being is flying unconcerned with what the mind is saying stina says only the person can be here. So Chitra says, when I don't want to say anything, Satsang feels like bathing in a clear mountain stream. Let whatever has to be said also come from this space. I know what you speak of. It seems like when some words have to come, I have to first take a personal identity. It can seem like that initially. But you will find this space. with this mouth just becomes an instrument for your own presence to speak your own presence to speak. radha ji namaste then um, surendra said beloved master i'm waiting for my turn you can ask my dear i see some tools are here so we are blocking them <laughs> but after that you can speak and bhagwati ji said beloved father if there is a report here right now it is wordless nothing i can say no words no description nothing simply enjoying to sit with you and sangha in truth here must leave for work in a few minutes thank you father and sir missing this one of only this on cards jay sitaram jay jay hanuman 
शिव हर हे साम सदा शिवा शिव हर हे हर 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 महादेवा हर 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 महादेवा पार्वती रमाना सदा शिवा पार्वती रमाना सदा शिवा नमा शंकर शिव चरण नमा शंकर शिव चरण भजा शंकर साई चरण भजा शंकर साई चरण शिव हर हे हर शिव हे शिव हर हे हर शिव Vikas says, "Father, could you please speak for a moment about the difference between being religious and being spiritual? I think some walls of ignorance will be burnt with that. <laughs> I don't feel it's about that actually for these ones." <laughs> You already said, no? You already said. I feel this is amazing satsang for all of us mm -hmm. because very easy to keep saying, oh, it's awareness and appearance. Mm -hmm. Awareness <laughs> and awareness is untouched by all appearance. You see, and like this one says, let this be tested. <laughs> So let it be tested. So let's use this for our own inquiry and see why is it that this appearance still seems to hold some power? If it does, what power does it hold? Also teaches us how to be so grateful for the opportunities that we had. So grateful for this opportunity that we have such and so beautifully from all over the world. All of us come. Okay, so none of this can be taken for granted. Just in this moment, all of us are here. So let's enjoy this moment completely. So we never know what tomorrow might bring. And if there's a sense of attachment even to this form of satsang, we can 
contemplate this also. We feel it is very, very beautiful satsang for all of us. And a big thank you to the moderators, I know. <laughs> it can seem quite challenging. It can seem like big, big gratitude to all of you. I'm so thankful for every moment, every moment I get to spend with each and every one of you. We have been cookies. Shanti, 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 Brahma, Paramastu, Om Shri Sadguru Bhagavan Ki Jai, Om Shri Sadguru Bhagavan Ki Jai.